Thank you. And here's another word for your family. In Genesis chapter 11, we read a genealogy. We read a genealogy of Shem, son of Noah, going down to one named Abram. But here in verse 25, we read about Terah, and Terah begat Nahor, uh, or after he begat Terah, Nahor lived 119 years and begat sons and daughters. Now Terah lived 70 years and begat, and here's her, his three sons, Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now, as you consider these three individuals, you'll recognize, hopefully, if you're familiar with the scriptures here in Genesis in this chapter and continuing on, you'll recognize Abram and, and who his wife would have been, Sarai, later on in this chapter where we read about her, and his family. But you'll notice Abram's mentioned first. And yet, if you do a little math, if you sit down with the dates and the, the times in which they lived and the length that they lived and when individuals died and you had calculated it all up, you'd find out Abram's not the oldest, and yet he's mentioned first. Now, typically in Scripture, because of birthright, because of prominence in birthright, the oldest is mentioned first, but not here. Here, Abram is mentioned first, and the likelihood is he was the youngest and not the oldest. Abram's mentioned first. Now, the question is, why? Because of prominence. Because his prominence wasn't in his birthright. It was in his faithfulness to God. You see, Abram will be the one who will be called by God out from his kindred, out from his home out from his family to a land God would show him. Notice what we read in chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. God told Abram, you leave your home, you leave your country, you leave your kindred, you leave your family, and you follow me. Now, you might ask, well, why did he have to leave his family? The indication is when we step forward in the Genesis record to the time of Jacob and Jacob returns back up to Abram's family to find a wife and he goes up there. When he leaves, you'll remember that he has married two daughters of one of Abram's kindred and when he lives, leaves, they bring their idols with them. They, they steal their father's idols and, and hide them and bring them with them out of their father's house. Oh, Abram's family, they were idolaters. They were idol worshipers, but not Abram. You see, Abram has a place of prominence because of faithfulness. He has a place listed first because he first lived faithful. Now, your family, your parents, grandparents, they may not be faithful to God. You may be the only one. You may be, like Abram, a descendant of a family that's decided not to obey God in accordance with His Word. Let me encourage you, if you are, don't give up because of your family. Depend on God. Decide to live faithful no matter what. Decide that your relationship with God comes before your relationship with your family. Decide that where God leads your life through His Word, you will go. And then, let me encourage you, as Abram did, let it be said of you that you teach your children to do the same. This has been another word for the family.